who they're in. Yeah, you look at this Packer defense, and they've been far from a dominant defense this season. But the one thing you see, the last couple weeks now, they're making those critical plays in big situations, and none bigger than an interception from Tony Romo last week. Start with the pre-snap look. Two things. Safety Sean Richardson intentionally muddied his alignment. He gave no defined coverage read. Second, Jarek Bush aligned inside slot receiver Cole Beasley, a strong indicator he had help to the outside. At the snap, the coverage defined itself. Richardson retreated as a two-deep safety. Bush stayed inside, a defined indicator that corner Tremont Williams was sitting outside looking back inside. Take note, this was to the boundary, the short side of the field. It was covered to trap. Beasley saw Williams' body position and throttled down out of his break. Tony Romo did not recognize the trap element and threw it to the outside to Williams. It was a beautifully disguised cover to trap concept. Williams was looking inside right from the snap. Beasley read it, Romo did not. That was as well executed as you can do it in a critical situation. Ah, good stuff, Josh. That's why you watch the matchup show. Stay right there. Up next, Hot GM Josh provide a brand new examination of the problem with Tony Romo, the Cowboys running game, the Cowboys defense, a complete breakdown of the meltdown in the Metroplex. That's next. Last week, it was Sam Shields of the Green Bay Packers. Last year, it was Rob Jackson of the Washington Redskins. They joined an exclusive club of seven defensive players who have intercepted Tony Romo in the final minutes to turn a Dallas Cowboys victory into a Dallas Cowboys defeat. Tony Romo, 12-18 and 18 in the regular season games in December and January. But, Josh, it goes way beyond that. Oh, yeah. We've got to start with Monty Kiffin's defense right now, ranked 28th against the run in the National Football League. Yeah, we're, we're focusing uh, on Tony Romo and the Cowboys offense far too much. You look at the problems with the uh, Dallas defense, they're really evident. And, and I'll take it to halftime. If you're listening to Mike McCarthy in the Green Bay Packer locker room, they're down 26 to 3. You got to be thinking, okay, it's got to be a throw ball second half. We got to rally. We're down 23 points. That's not what they did. What they did was come out and play smash mouth football. Just hit the Dallas Cowboys right in the mouth at the line of scrimmage. And the first play was symptomatic of the Dallas Cowboy defense. This was a basic power run by the Packers, with the right guard pulling to the left. Defensive tackles Nick Hayden and Jason Hatcher were moved much too easily. Hayden was pushed right out of the point of attack and Hatcher was driven back three yards off the line of scrimmage. The inability of Hayden and Hatcher to hold the point had a major impact on stacked linebackers Emron Lawrence and Devontae Holloman. First, pulling guard TJ Lang had a clear path and sharp angle to Lawrence. Watch Lawrence. He was slow to recognize and react. He waited for the block three yards on the defensive side of the ball. Secondly, Holloman had no chance to scrape over the top into the hole because Hatcher was driven right into his lap. From an offensive perspective, this was beautiful. From a defensive standpoint, this was as poor as it gets. This was a signature power run that's featured in every offensive playbook and back Eddie Lacy was not touched until he had run 60 yards. Jaws, that's one of the best pieces we've ever done on the NFL match. the sky doesn't What lie. a great illustration Evidence. of the problems Man. with that Dallas defense. Let's continue to spread the blame around, Haji. And everybody talks about the lack of balance in the second half of that game for the Dallas Cowboys offense, but it was evident in the first half of the game. End of story. So, I mean, the first half was the exact same thing as the second half. If this really comes down to where the problems exist, I believe it's in uh, Tony Romo's intellect and understanding in critical moments, the structure of just a play. His first interception, keep in mind, with that bunch package, and he did the smoke where it was called a run, but he chose to throw it. 
If you just understood the concepts of the blocking of the running play and who's on the other side, like Clay Matthews on that side, you don't even go to that. Based on where the situation is in the game, you don't even do that. You don't improvise at that time. During the first half, they had had the same formation, same type of front, and what they do? He handed the football off. And? And they had success. <laughs> yeah. And if he'd have handed it off, they possibly, yeah. worst case scenario, it would have been third and one or first and ten had he handed the football off. All right, let's move off of this game and go to the number one game of the weekend, the big early game That's on right, Sports Sal. Center.